so hi everyone in my previous video i've already explained a lot around generative ai lang chains ai agents gans etc but we have never talked about llms that is large language models that is which is at the core of everything the entire gen ai storm that has come so llms are at the core of it so eventually today we will be discussing about what are llms and eventually some salient features of an llm so let's get started so first of all you need to understand the uh, large language models are nothing but machine learning models only that are based on neural networks which predict the next token given the sequence of previously predicted tokens and the input prompt so assume that you are at a timestamp tn and eventually the input was what is the capital of india so uh, the answer that you are expecting is the capital of india is delhi so assume that the previously the predicted token till now is the capital of so the next so to predict india the capital of india the fourth token it would be using the input prompt that we have already given alongside the previously predicted tokens the capital of right so it is doing nothing it is just predicting the next token given the previously predicted tokens and the input prompt now how is it able to understand the context of the input that you are giving like as we understand you tell me sentence i am able to understand its meaning so the logic behind that is a concept called as multi head attention that i've already explained in my previous videos in my previous blog also that you can check out ki how multi head attention works you must have heard of this attention is all you need in one of the blockbuster nlp papers that came out in 2016 if you haven't you can check out my blog on how it works so multi head attention is behind for which helps you in focusing on important words compared to other tokens present in a sentence so this is how the model is able to understand the context of the input moving ahead at any point of time the llm itself doesn't know the final output this is very very important so uh, any output any long paragraph that llm is generating it is generating following the next token prediction only so at a given point of time it doesn't know ki what eventually it will also output in the final answer so you always have a scope of improvement because once the llm is able to generate the whole output you can ask it to recheck it and eventually it's one of the tricks that you can improve uh, which is present in prompt engineering now you all must be a bit curious about how such a model can be developed which is able to answer almost everything you ask it an nlp problem you ask it a journal problem you ask it sports problems it is able to help you with everything so this is because of the zero shot capabilities of large language models which for which they are known so basically in case of zero shot abilities a model which has zero shot capabilities it can generate results for a problem for which it has never seen a data how a model gets zero shot capabilities so that you can read about my blog on one shot learning and different models that i have explained uh the next point about llms that they are usually very huge they are usually in gb some models if llama 2 i uh, if i'm not wrong gpt4 they are around 40 45 gb so usually these models are huge uh, in gb and i think to load them in your local system if you're working as an individual it is a little tricky part so you you can test out the smaller models like that are those are in hundreds or 200s of mbs but playing around with these big models like llama 70 billion or gpt4 is a little tricky now the most important part that i am discussing now is the architecture that is behind the llm large language model so basically the transformer paper that came in 2016 has a very crucial role in the architecture design for llm so all the llms a to z whatever you know you know gpt you know claude you know llama you know palm you know mistral everyone follows a transformer architecture some way or the other so either they follow the complete transformer architecture or they follow a subset of it like gpt which is a decoder part of the transformer so for understanding this you need to revert back to my previous video on transformer so you will able to understand transformer comprise of two components one is an encoder other is a decoder so gpt models that we uh, gpt 3 3.5 4 everyone follows the decoder part of the transformer while models like llama or mistral follow the transformer part now llms are usually the llms that we are using like so for example chat gpt that we are using which is based on gpt 3.5 are generalist models basically they are decent enough to do any random task you ask it about your uh, travel itinerary you ask it about some mathematical problem they will be giving you decent results but the results won't be outstanding such a version of an llm which is like jack of all king of none is called as a pre trained llm which is trained on a general corpus so it will be helping you in uh, sorting out most of your common issues and getting a decent results but if you wish to have great results outstanding results for a specific problem like for example you are going for a classification you want to have 99% of accuracy 
in that case you need to pick up one of this generalist llm and fine tune it that is you need to retrain the model on your specific data which is called as fine tuning now uh, most interesting part is you must have heard of model name like flan t5 excel double excel what is this excel double excel large these are not clothes right so basically most of the llms comes in various sizes this size is basically the number of weights my weight parameters that are available in that model so you must have heard of llama 70 billion llama 13 billion llama 70 7 billion so what are these so these are all different versions of a model in which we are uh, eventually reducing the model size at time so that you are able to use it at different levels so if you have the resources available you can use a biggest model if you don't you can use a smaller model also now question might be coming that if the architecture remains the same how are we able to reduce or increase the weight parameter so there can be multiple things increasing the input size so basically the embedding that we are feeding in gets increased the architecture remains the same but the dimension changes right so if the input size is increased the weight matrix increases or you can also change the attention matrix size also or at times you might be tweaking the architecture in a minor tweaks should be there or you will be increasing the attention blocks so you need to read the transform paper where you will getting multiple attention blocks so in some of the bigger models the attention blocks would be repeated more number of times as compared to the smaller models similarly the same line so some of the model families don't follow the excel double excel large terminology they follow the uh, number terminology that is 70 billion 7 billion 13 billion so this billion 70 the number represents the total number of parameters present so by llama 70 billion we mean that it is 70 billion parameters that are present nothing else now uh, most of the companies don't really tell about the training data set that are getting used or the architecture being followed exactly and this is not open source at time so you might be not be able to get much information all the information about specific llms now loading llms in memory is usually a challenge as i told you they are humongous in size so uh, getting them loaded in your memory becomes a problem so i have been working in a form and eventually i have been facing this issue that we are we know there are certain models that are great but we can't just load them because it will increase the cost uh, by 10 cross or 20 cross also the last point that i would be telling about llm is that they are generative models so eventually don't expect the same output when you input the same thing so uh, if you have followed my previous video on generative modeling there is one of the features of generative model that there is a sense of randomness always available always present in the output so eventually that because of that randomness eventually even if you give the same input the outputs are highly unlikely that the outputs would be same so also very recently one of my teammates uh, in my current form asked me a very relevant question that why do we need so many lms like every now and then if you open linkedin you will see that some company has released a new version of an lm beat phi 2 beat minstrel mixtrel and gpts are coming up gpt4 has been released a couple of months back so why do we need so many lms and what is the requirement so to answer this question for all those guys who are uh, thinking the same so let's take a reference for machine learning for now like uh, we like for example the classification problem so if you have in machine learning you have been using in solving classification problems you must be knowing that there are different types of classification models also you can use logistic regression you can use svm you can even use random forest etc why do we have so many classification models also so in the first place not all for different types of data set different types of problems different models may come into handy and eventually when you select a model you go for a hit and trial eventually let's try out different models and whichever is giving me better accuracy i'll choose that similar goes with llms also different llms hold expertise in different domains in different problem statements some of the llms might be very good with coding tasks some might be very good with nlp tasks so eventually when you have a task in hand you need to hit and try with different llms and whichever works fine for you you can go for that so you need to have options what i'm trying to say is that apart from that the different in expertise as i told you different elements hold different expertise in different domains because of the data set being used for training because not every data set that is used by for example like gpt4 is available for models like phi right the data set is not available so availability of the data what data they are pre-trained on is very very important apart from that the size of the corpus the bigger the corpus the more information the lm is able to grab third part is the minor tweaks in the training process so if you go into reading they have introduced something called as a grouped attention also because of this different lms have started holding 
uh, expertise in different domains. Apart from that, you might not be able to use the best performing LM always. Like for example, even I know GPT-4 is the best model to use for most of the tasks. But can I load it in my local system? I can't. Right. So what's an alternative for that? Apart from that, not just the cost and the size, at times some models are not following safety, uh, safety and security. Some might be breaching the security of user also. Some might be displaying user private data also. So if you have been in the news, you must have heard the chat GPT has showed up some private data about some of the users. So that can be the case. So uh, concerning like trade off between different aspects not just the performance but the size the cost the safety security issues and other reasons has to be kept in mind and depending upon that you need to pick up you need to pick up the best model that suits all your use cases apart from that all your concerns also also uh, if you want to accomplish an easy task like say you want to have a summarization using llm now eventually what i am assuming is that summarization is not that difficult a task right so why to use the biggest of the guns rather than if something smaller can be used like for example if you're going for summarization even gpt 3.5 does a great job why to use gpt4 right so why to waste resources so because of that you need to have different LMs. different companies are coming with different versions and eventually you are getting more options so that you can uh, play around with these uh, models fine tune them you don't want to find them use rag whatever you wish to do and eventually test and try on your problem statement whatever works fine for you you should use that